Jane Slater is a reporter for the NFL Network. She's been covering uh, the Cowboys for years. I've got her on my podcast network. It's called the Boys and Girl Podcast. I think I always think that's clever. And she broke the story, not a surprise, uh, yesterday. Players talking, leaking stuff, and uh, that's what reporters do. And she's a great one. Jane Slater is now joining us live from Dallas. So let's start with this. Um, I guess I can ask this question. Is it a player, multiple players, Jane? What's, what's What's the layering on this? How substantial, uh, if I may, are the leaks? To be fair, Colin, there has already been an attempt to sort of identify who that leak is or who those leaks are today. And I think in the interest of this being a new coaching staff and, of course, player security, I think it's just best I don't comment on that. Here's what I will say. It was enough that I felt that this had permeated through the locker room and that there was a distrust and a breakaway from this coaching staff. And all you have to do is pop in the tape, Colin. I mean, you can look at the lack of effort, the sort of uh, moving away from the philosophy on different sides of the ball. There was a give up factor that we hadn't seen before. And so it really started with an on the record statement that sort of raised an alarm for me. And that was from Jalen Smith a couple of weeks ago when he said, you know, maybe we should simplify this playbook. And Colin, you've been covering sports for a while. When you've got a new coaching staff, you're not used to hearing players go on the record and and question the direction of it. It, 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 By saying we should simplify the, the playbook, I thought it was a little disrespectful. And so I've been trying to dig on this, but as Mike has been talking about over the last 12 hours, He's been very intent on keeping things in house, but this is something I think that even though in the last 12 hours, he says he has an open door policy, you can come to him. I may agree with you. I may disagree with you. I don't know if that has been fully conveyed in this condensed situation as it relates to COVID and training camp and the amount of time and the amount of touch points that this coaching staff has had with these guys. But it's been enough that there's a frustration that you don't need to hear it from players. You can see it. It just got confirmed. Is it more Mike Nolan or McCarthy? Because, listen, coaches make bad hires. I mean, you you know, not every coordinator works. I mean, is it is it do you believe it's players upset with Nolan or McCarthy? Well, McCarthy is the guy that is empowering Mike Nolan. I mean, McCarthy is a guy that's empowering Kellen Moore. McCarthy is a guy that's empowering your secondary coaches. McCarthy is a guy that's empowering your offensive line. I mean, this literally translates to both sides of the ball. So I know a lot of people are pointing fingers and saying, well, because Jalen Smith made that comment, he's got to be the source back up here. There's a lot of guys in that locker room who today they're beginning to talk. Sean Lee had a statement that came out where the consensus in our locker room is that we all need to work hard. We all need to improve. We're not pointing fingers. These Nobody is going to go on a record and put their name on this. There's no incentive in doing that. Uh, But there has absolutely been a feeling in this locker room as it relates to this new coaching staff that this is not a direction they feel good about. But more importantly, that they don't feel like these coaches can teach. They don't make on-the-fly adjustments and that the guys aren't prepared. I I think that that is, to me, the spirit of the report was – Injuries are one thing, and that's one way to lose your players. But to lose your players six games into the season, that is a whole other thing. Now, with that being said, you know, Mike, I'm sure didn't love the report. And again, he just kept saying, as men, we need to handle this in-house. You know, I did ask him, do you think maybe you guys try to reinvent the wheel a little too soon, do a little too much, given, again, the challenges that come with COVID, not fully getting a handle of your personnel? And, you know, he said, look, They've gone to the table. In fact, he said after the second game, they did simplify the playbook. I get the sense they're trying to make adjustments, but he also said these guys have got to at least try things that they haven't done in the past. I mean, we had guys like Everson Griffin a couple weeks ago saying he wasn't doing the three-point stance anymore. You know, you had Mike McCarthy even going on the record and saying it felt like guys were improvising and they needed to buy in. So this wasn't necessarily a shocking report and nobody that's been on this beat is necessarily shocked by it. I think the shocking aspect is 
players felt compelled enough that this stuff yeah. is no longer staying in house. Um, they're very deep at wide receiver. I suggested today this is really more of a rebuild than they'd like to admit. And Michael Gallup's going to get paid eventually. Amari's not going anywhere. C.D. Lamb's not going anywhere. And Cedric Wilson can flat out play. That maybe Gallup to the Bears, Gallup to the Ravens, good playoff teams potentially that need a number two receiver. That would be acknowledging, hey, we're deep at receiver. We got to get draft picks and rebuild. Do, do you think anybody in that organization about three and a half? minutes left believes they're a rebuilding roster because i i'm starting to think this is what they are at this point they're what much closer to rebuild than they want to admit i agree with you in that respect i do believe that hope springs eternal in frisco as it relates to the cowboys and jerry jones will never say that to you and neither will stephen jones but that's certainly what it feels like and maybe that's not a bad thing colin i think what you've got here is you do need to find some more guys that are mike guys You need to get guys that buy into the Mike philosophy. And some of that happens with drafts. Some of that, you know, comes with bringing guys in through free agency. And by the way, you were able to get some of those this off season. He might need some more of those uh, to buy into what he's trying to do here. I, I do think that one of the glaring deficiencies though on this staff is, is this defense. I, I don't know if, if trying to change this defense, given the abbreviated time that they had and some of the personnel made the most sense I've talked to some people around the league as even this report came out that said, as it speaks to Mike Nolan as the defensive coordinator, they don't know why this guy's the defensive coordinator. Now they say a lot of lovely things about him as a human, but in terms of this role, he's a little over his skis. And if you look at his record and other stops as a defensive coordinator, and even this team back in 2005, when Mike McCarthy and Mike Nolan were together, it's very, it's very much trending in the same direction. Yes, And so I know that this is McCarthy's guy. They work together in San Francisco. I didn't think it was, we typically hear Jerry really go to bat for these guys. He said, I'm okay with Mike this week. That didn't seem like a ringing endorsement to me. So I think when people are trying to figure out, well, what are they going to do? How are they going to save the season? I don't think they're going to be overly reactive. I think there's a long leash on, on Mike McCarthy as it relates to this year and the challenges that he's been up against. I mean, 10 guys on IR. You've got Zach Martin, who's in concussion protocol, another left tackle that just had surgery. So you've got a lot of, of, of problems there. But I do think that one is one of your more glaring issues that you're going to have to address uh, moving forward. And maybe that happens during the bye week. Maybe Mike McCarthy gets more involved. Maybe George Edwards gets more involved. Something's got to give there. But again, going back to your question, I think this also opens up a whole discussion about Dak Prescott. A lot of people are saying, well, his number has gone up because clearly he's the X factor. He has the intangibles. The leadership is lacking with him just gone one week. People are talking. I agree with you, but I also think the Cowboys are still going to have that argument, and that argument's going to even be stronger. How can you build a championship team if you're overpaying your quarterback and you have got a lot of spots on this roster you've yeah. now got to address yeah. as a result of so many guys that went on IR? So it does feel like they're in rebuilding mode just based on that alone. Jane Slater, great stuff. NFL Network covering the Cowboys. Boys and Girls podcast on the Herd Podcast Network. She's terrific. Broke the story. Players trust her, uh, obviously. And uh, it's great seeing you, Jane. Thank you so much. Always good seeing you, Colin. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.